Hi friends, do you want to see something unusual? Sit back comfortably, today we will again be nostalgic. Before you, TEC41 Bulgarian Giant, one of the most stable and fantastic laboratory power supplies. Why I think so will become clear a little later. And for now, a little background. I probably said that I was going to make a small retro corner in my workshop with old measuring instruments. So I almost finished it and I hope to be able to make a video on this topic soon. Nevertheless, I continue to search for interesting devices for this lab. Today we will talk about laboratory power supplies. Earlier I bought TEC 1300K power supply and even made a video on it. In terms of its technical characteristics and dimensions, this power source didn't quite suit me, and I decided to sell it in good hands at no extra charge, and it happened. Then I bought a Soviet B547. It's cool but damn noisy and I'm not used to its control yet. Otherwise, it's quite a regular 13 volt 3 amp block. It is actually quite difficult to find really powerful and versatile sources among retro sources, because there were few of them. You have to sacrifice something, in this case, size. Recently, on the website of a local internet flea market, I came across a powerful, reliable, low-noise TEC41 power supply. Further, as usual, called the owner, but he hesitated and doubted about the price. The owner, an elderly grandfather, once worked as a metrologist, and he has as many as three such blocks and all three are in perfect condition, never been in use. In general, after a short conversation, I offered the price of $130, in my opinion a very favorable for grandfather, and this is a bit more than the cost of such devices from storage, and you can buy them much cheaper at flea markets. If there was a merchant in front of me, I would have called the price two times less, but here is another case. Grandfather was delighted and the next day the friend went to pick up the block and a few hours later it was with me. First impressions were very mixed. I understood that this is a whole monument with a weight of almost 18 kilos of Bulgarian filling from the times of socialism. The fact that it is practically new of course is good. The presence of technical documentation also pleased. But where do I shove it? This task isn't easy. Well, okay, let's start learning this Bulgarian, whatever one may say, but still a monster. First, about the technical parameters. It's fully linear with iron transformer, adjustable output voltage from 0 to 30 volts and current from 0 to 5 amps, so 150 pure linear watts. The instability of the output voltage will be no more than 0.01% plus 1 millivolt when mains changes plus minus 15%. Temperature drift plus minus 0.05% plus 3 millivolt per degree Celsius. The output voltage drift after 8 hours of operation under normal conditions isn't more than 0.2% plus 20 millivolt. There is a possibility of fine and coarse adjustments both in the case of voltage and in the case of current. The indicator is digital, it can be used separately as a voltmeter to measure the voltage of external sources. In general, this is a device that was used for laboratory research, in metrology and in research institutes. The device was produced in Bulgarian plant analytic in the city of Mikhailovgrad now renamed to Montana, year of manufacture 1989. Technical documentation. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that even the quality of the paper here is better than in the case of most instructions for devices from the USSR. The paper here is thick, not yellowed and judging by the font, it is likely that the instructions were printed on a typewriter. In any case, the instructions have everything. I won't list it, I'll just flip through a couple of pages. This is a certified power supply, there are all stamps, all quality controls, everything that can be passed, it passed. And this is because they were used for the most important tasks. The body is completely aluminium with a huge wall thickness, everything here is made of aluminium including the covers. On the front part we have a dual power terminals, 
knobs for coarse and fine adjustments of current and voltage, indicators of the device operation mode, stable current or stable voltage, then a digital display and buttons. The red one turns the device on and off. The button next to it switches the indicator, either it shows the output parameters of the power supply or it works as a separate voltmeter showing the voltage of an external source. The next button switches the type of digital display operation, either a voltmeter or an ammeter. Next, the button switches the measurement range of the voltmeter, 20 volts or 200 volts. That is, here the voltmeter can live its own life and be used as a regular desktop voltmeter. On the rear panel, everything is standard. Power cord, fuse and ground terminal. There are a lot of slots on the top and bottom covers for natural cooling. There are comfortable handles for transportation. If desired, the device can be used as a barbell and pump up your biceps. There is also a rack for device position fixing. What is a review without disassembly? And so, we take a screwdriver and climb inside. At first, I wanted to service the block, but looking at the insides, it became clear that there was nothing to service. There wasn't even a speck of dust there. In the meantime, I'll remind you that this is 150 watts of power, a measly 150 watts. But damn it, there are 5 power transistors, each with 15 amps and 100 watts of power dissipation. Technically, this unit with the appropriate transformer can produce all 500 watts. The layout is fantastic, a whole block of power capacitors as a filter, connected by thick bus. Judging by the instructions, the capacitors are KEA 2200 microfarads, 80 volts. That is, as a filtering, we have a total of 11,000 microfarads. This all shunted with film capacitor and resistor. Everything was done according to the canons. There is nothing to complain about. Next, we have a power part in the face of 5 2N3055 transistors, each sitting on its own huge radiator. There are current leveling resistors. Everything is connected beautifully. You just look and enjoy. The power reserve is multiple. It is almost impossible to hit all this. Taking into account the size of the radiators and the number of transistors, even if you drive it for days. Next, the control board. It is only one here and is joined by a large connector with boldly gilt pins. There are three operational amplifiers on this board, stable resistors, trimmers responsible for current and voltage limits, and other bindings. The paths are beautifully tinted and shine like the first day. You aren't satisfied with the quality of your homemade printed circuit boards? No, I'm not talking about you. Your boards are always very high quality. I know that I'm talking about us, ordinary mortals. Factory quality boards, in fact any size, shape or number of layers can be ordered from sponsor of this video, GLC PCB. Minimum production time, many delivery methods and be assured the quality will always be the highest. Many colors of solder mask and track coverage are available and the boards themselves can be made in different thicknesses depending on your needs. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description. Next is the front panel board and the digital indicators. There is some binding and an ADC on this board. It can be said to be a full-fledged digital voltmeter. Voltage and current regulators are generally a separate issue. Here there are wire, a pair is of open type and another pair of closed type. But everything is wire, the reliability is extremely high. The output terminals. There is no need to talk about them, so it is clear that they are silver plated. By the way, do you know why the output terminals are duplicated here? The main power ones are those that are in the center, along the edges, measuring ones. So, if long wires are used, then there will be losses in them, but the voltmeter itself will show the voltage at the terminals. Additional wires can be connected to the side terminals, which cling directly to the load bypassing the power wires. Thus, the drop on the power wires is compensated and the voltmeter will show the actual voltage value at the load and not what is at the terminals. In a word, this is a 4-wire measurement for loss compensation. 
If this option isn't needed, the measuring terminals are simply closed with the main ones using jumpers. Does your lab power supply have such option? Here you can also notice a textile plate on which there are several powerful low resistance resistors. This is a power shunt, it is also a current sensor. Moreover, precision highly stable resistors with a small tolerance are used here. Next. We have a small radiator with a medium power transistor. I assume that it is a pre-output one and controls the power transistors. But the fact is that according to the circuit, there should be another 2N3055 on the control, which I never found. Now, let's move a little back to the transformers. There are two of them, next is a diode rectifier on a separate radiator and an intermediate relay. Now, about the circuit. Despite the fact that the circuit was developed more than 30 years ago, advanced solutions were applied in it, which made it possible to increase the efficiency and reduce the ripple. The fact that there is a huge margin of power here, I think everyone understood. So, even taking this into account, the unit has a relay switch which is designed to increase efficiency. As a rule, in units which switch the windings, it is possible to reduce the size of the power transistor headsink but here it was decided not to do this. We have a voltage comparator that monitors the output voltage. And if it is above a certain limit, power is supplied through the specified transistors to the windings of the intermediate relay and it will work. In this case, the indicated relay contacts will open, while the others will close. Thereby, the second transformer will be connected to the mains and its secondary winding will be connected in series with the secondary winding of the first transformer. If the set voltage is less than the limit, the second transformer is idle. Technically, the second transformer could be not installed but simply made taps on the first one and operated with them, as is done in modern units. A large transformer has several windings the first one providing power to the control system. Moreover, the control circuit is powered not from a simple circuit, but from a voltage stabilizer based on the indicated Zener diodes, and their current is also stabilized by the current stabilizer. That is, it is some kind of auxiliary power source with a very high stabilization coefficient. Further, we have generally incredible solutions by the old standards of technology. Do you see the windings and a small circuit? This is a current load which is designed to quickly discharge powerful capacitors when you reduce the output voltage of the power supply. Otherwise, the voltmeter will work with a delay and due to such a load this will not happen. Well done, they thought of everything. Stabilization of current and voltage are built on operational amplifiers. A highly sensitive bridge control circuit is realized here both in the case of current and voltage. The outputs of the operational amplifier control the emitter follower, which in turn already controls the analog of the composite transistors, which consists of the pre-output and output transistors. Current control is organized on the same principle as voltage. Only the circuit monitors the voltage drop across the current shunt. The device output is protected by the reverse connection of diode. I would talk for a long time about the circuit, about the realization, about the reinforced frame high quality element base, but I won't. The video is already long and we haven't even tested the block yet. First, let's check the veracity of the voltmeter reading. It is 3.5 bit here. We set the voltage to 100 mV on the power supply, the reference device shows the same. 1 volt, 10 volt, 30 volt. The same is true for current, 10 milliamp, 100 milliamp, 1 amp, 3 amp, and 5 amp. The display works quite quickly and accurately, but you can correct it with the indicated trimmers. I don't touch anything, the calibration is factory. Now I set the output voltage to 30 volts and load the source with a current of 5 amperes. Stability is at a high level, naturally there are no voltage drops. Then I warmed up the device for half an hour. 
Moreover, warmed it up additionally, installing it on a heating battery. After half an hour, we set the output of our unit to a voltage of 30 volts and a maximum current limit of 5 amperes. We load the source with a high precision electronic load in the battery discharge mode in order to simultaneously see the power of 150 watts. The unit worked for about 50 minutes and its output voltage deviated from the set value by only about 5 mV. If you aren't very versed in instrumental parameters, I'll say that it is a very, very good value. What are the voltage fluctuations? The Bulgarian TAC has never heard of pulsations, but let's measure them anyway. Measurement of the output voltage pulsation done more than 30 years after its production. Therefore, it is worth to say that the capacitors here are far from the first freshness. In addition, there is pulsation on the oscilloscope probe from the outside. Now, the oscilloscope probes are closed, but nevertheless we have noise of about 12 mV peak value and about 10.5 mV RMS. You must look at the first two parameters. That is, we have not connected anything yet, but we already have such initial pulsation. A linear electronic load is used as a load, i.e. it doesn't create any additional noise. The output of the power supply is set to 25 volt. The load current is 4 amps. The unit has been operating in this mode for 10 minutes. After warming up, I moved on to measuring the ripples. The oscilloscope has a bandwidth of 60 MHz. A sampling rate is 1 giga sample per second. I checked on different values of the oscilloscope time sweep, approximately the same values are obtained. Now, I measure the pulsation at the output of the power supply closer to the terminals. We get the following values. About 20 mV peak and about 13 mV RMS. That is, the pulsation of the power supply itself is from 7 to 10 mV peak value and about 2 mV RMS. Let me remind you that this is at a load current of 4 amps and a voltage of 25 volt. This is a very good value, since as I said the power supply was a serious device, then there is nothing surprising. Well, how do you like TEC41? I'm sure you are impressed. Yes, it has huge dimensions, but this isn't a cheap switching power supply for several tens of dollars. It is from the category of devices that can be inherited because a good device will never become obsolete. Especially when it comes to a laboratory source. What will happen to him? I can change capacitors after three decades and unit is again new. This video is coming to an end. Please don't forget to rate it, share with your friends and if you have time you can visit my other resources. That's all today. I wish peace and goodness to all. Now I say goodbye until we meet again, with you, as always, was Kassian TV.